Good morning and welcome to our online worship service with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. We're glad you joined us from wherever you are. Um, if you are in this area, uh, the women are having a, a bake sale. Uh, apparently everything that's coming in on the bake sale is has chocolate in it. So that's us. For me, I love chocolate. So it's, a, it's for their fundraisers, for the various ministries in town that they... Uh, that they support, and so if you're here, uh, come on in the morning somehow, between or after the services, and they'll hopefully there'll be some stuff to buy. We're still continuing our sock drive uh, for the um, Everett Gospel uh, Mission in Everett, Washington, so that'll be going until I think the end of this month, February. Um, we're still plugging away uh, in Washington. The COVID cases are coming down uh, rapidly, uh, as they are in many parts of the United States. Uh, some of the lockdowns are starting to be eased, so we, we hope and pray that this may be coming to the end of it, but we're, we've learned not to, to get our hopes up too much in what we see with our eyes, but uh, we do always hope in the Lord. So we're glad you joined us, and uh, let's continue with our worship uh, today. Uh, before we go through our brief order of confession and forgiveness of sins, uh, let's be reminded of God's expectations as they are found in the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. You shall honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, his servants, or his animals. Uh, knowing we cannot uh, obey the law in its deepest level, we need to come before the Lord and receive his forgiveness. So we gather together in the name of the Holy Trinity, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help, to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. In your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Lord God, mercifully receive the prayers of your people. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do and give us grace and power to do them. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by the water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of the drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious. Above all else, it is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Our second scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead. So how come some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Uh, the Holy Gospel uh, this morning comes to us from Luke, the sixth chapter. And we're beginning at verse 17. He, Jesus, came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And, 
And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him. For power came out from him and healed all of them. When he looked up at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets." But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when when all speak well of you, for that is is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Uh, The gospel of the Lord. So before we get into that particular text, and we'll be doing... Uh, for next week, sort of a two-part series on some, a theme that I want to look at today, and we'll be doing the, the theme after that teaching uh, next week. For, but for now, let's look at this under the, the theme of, of approval seekers. That's what I want to talk about today. So let's add, ask God to bless this time. Lord, thank you for your word, and I pray that you would indeed save us from a pattern of behavior that is destructive to us, something that you have come to save us from. Help us to hear your word, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. So um, what I want to talk about uh, today is approval seeking and following Jesus. And the, the two don't go hand in hand. Uh, they, are, they are at polar ends to each other. And most of us, I suppose, and I think all, all human beings, because we all fall into this, can point to some areas in our lives where we are approval seekers to some degree. All of us can uh, point to some perhaps painful time in their past when they did not receive the approval of someone else. I remember it was 1972. I was in sixth grade, and standing in a line on the, the, uh, the, the playground, we were saying the Pledge of Allegiance, getting ready to go to class, and, and I was wearing bell-bottom pants. And I remember Belinda Willis, uh, this blonde-haired girl who was standing in front of me. She looked around, she gasped as she looked at my bell-bottom pants and smiled. What are you wearing? The pants, I said. And then she turned around shaking her head. She was disapproving of my clothes. And I remember that to this day. And um, I, I, I thought of that story because this past week my wife had bought some bell-bottom pants. And uh, that is what triggered this extremely painful memory of mine from so many years ago. One of my wife's favorite stories is that show, uh, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, the PBS radio show. And um, on that show, Faith Solly, a panelist on the show and contributor to uh, CBS uh, News Sunday Morning, chronicled her quest for external validation in her book, her 2016 book, Approval Junkie, Adventures in Caring Too Much. In that book, she describes her lifelong search for kudos, you know, praise, things like that, from getting good grades in school to working furiously to win her high school beauty pageant. She writes, no one stood a chance against my emaciated, spastic resolve to find approval. We may not like to admit it, but, but we are all, in some respects, uh, performing in front of some kind of audience. Uh, One prominent psychologist compared approval seeking to a kind of drug that fills us with good feelings when we get it, a drug we run to whenever we feel bad. From a spiritual and biblical perspective, though, uh, approval seeking is a kind of bondage. Approval seeking comes from that part of our sinful nature that seeks to find our ultimate approval outside of God. It is bondage to the opinions and approval of others that we allow to place over God's approval. And the Lord has come to free us from this bondage that we all find ourselves in in one way or the other. Uh, According to Jesus, 
the approval seeker who measures their, their lives by, by what others believe is cursed. But having found Jesus and co- becoming his disciple means learning to seek only his approval. And there we will find blessings. The Lord says that even if we are rejected by others, we will be blessed with him. And that is good news. And that is a word of freedom from seeking approval. So let's look at that text. Uh, Before I look at the specific text, some of the verses that we're going to look at, uh, we need to kind of talk about the context because it just kind of, the teaching of Jesus just kind of abruptly hits us without any any pre-knowledge of what just happened. So uh, Jesus, the, the day before, had spent the night in prayer. He was up on a mountainside, the text says in Luke. And, and, and there, somewhere in the midst, he had chosen 12, of, 12 disciples, 12 men, who he called apostles. And then Jesus and the 12, it says in Luke, come down the mountain to a level place, and there they find a larger group of disciples, followers of Jesus, plus a much, much larger crowd that had come from all over the area to, to, to hear him teach and heal them of various diseases. And it says that people tried just to touch Jesus because Luke says that power was coming from him to, to heal everybody that touched him. And so that's the context, and that's important to understand. Um, and, and even though there was a large crowd of people um, who were there, who were coming to Jesus for the first time, verse 12 says that as he begins his teaching, he is directing his teaching at his disciples, those who have made choices to follow him, those who had made a commitment to become his disciples and to learn from him as his full-time students. And as always, there are, there are consequences to following Jesus and taking him seriously. And, and this is sort of where he's directing the focus of his, the direction of his teaching. And, and, he, and, and here the consequences mean making a choice of where we will find our approval and then dying to all other sources of approval. So these disciples, these apostles now, had in following Jesus, in choosing to to, to become his disciples, to some some extent made some sacrifices. They had left their families, uh, not divorced themselves from their families, but separated themselves from their families for some extended period of time. And I I cannot imagine any of those families uh, being excited about that. Uh, some of those families may have, re- have felt rejected by the, their choice to follow Jesus and probably told them so. The apostles had all left their profession and their uh, ability to make money. Uh, that would have gone over well with mom and dad, for sure, um, as well as their business partners. They had made the decision to identify with Jesus which also meant that anybody out there that would have been opposed to Jesus would have also been antagonistic toward them. Jesus represented a kingdom. He taught about a kingdom that was opposed to the, king, to the values of the world. And even the teachings of some of the Jewish religious leaders at the time, all those people would have been opposed to the disciples because of their as a consequence of their following Jesus. And so in this context, the disciples needed to know that they had made the right decision because they were beginning to feel the weight of the consequences of following the Lord. And in this passage, the Lord tells them that they, that they are blessed in following him. Jesus, looking at his disciples, said, Blessed are you who are poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets." 
let, let, me, let me say some things about what Jesus is not saying here. Uh, because some people looking at this at face value become sort of confused. Jesus is not making a general statement about poverty, hunger, grief, hatred, and the like. Uh, there are many poor people in this world who, who have fallen into great evil and do great evil things and certainly have not entered the kingdom of God. Therefore, they have not inherited the kingdom of God on, by virtue of their economic status or their poverty. And on the other hand, there are a very great many godly people who have money and are faithful followers of the Lord and who give generously of their money uh, to various causes of the, of, the, of the Lord, including feeding the poor. So neither wealth nor poverty influences if we can get into the, into the kingdom of God or not. Jesus is referring to those who have come to him, the Son of God, and have therefore suffered the consequences, including being hated and excluded, insulted and rejected as being evil. So getting back to the theme of what we're talking about here, if you are an approval seeker, uh, following Jesus is not going to be easy for you. But if we set the Lord as an audience of one, we can know that we will be truly blessed because when someone is approved of by the Lord, we will never lose that approval. On the other hand, when we seek approval from other humans, that approval is superficial at best and temporary. But the Lord's approval comes to us by grace and in genuine love and will never stop. To trade God's favor for human favor, which is the nature of uh, sinful approval seeking, is very much like Esau, uh, son of Abraham, trading his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of porridge, actually the son of uh, uh, Isaac, not, not Abraham. And if you don't remember that story, you could check that out in chapter 25 of, of Genesis, how, uh, how, how, how Esau it was so hungry that he, fit, he, he satisfied an immediate need for uh, something that was of, of incredible value, his birthright. The point is that Jesus is making in this text is that there will be consequences to following the, following the Lord and, 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 and exclusion and lack of uh, approval from others, but it's worth it because at the end of the day, you will be blessed beyond imagination. On the other hand, having the approval of society is not all that it's cracked up to be. Having other people's approval really doesn't amount to much, really. It just gratifies an immediate need. So Jesus continues, But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Approval seekers, approval seekers who get what they hope for in people will not find, ultimately, a blessing, but a curse. And, that, and that's the, the, uh, the implication by the word woe. It's, woe is not just a word to use to stop horses. Approval seeking uh, from humans is a kind of bondage. Uh, it's a kind of slavery. And it, it harms us uh, in, in many ways that we may not even imagine. For example... One of the main reasons uh, why people want to be rich, or at least appear so, it, it has, has, isn't, isn't about greed, although um, it's part of greed. One of the main reasons people seek approval, seek, seek the approval of others in wealth or in appearance of wealth is because they want the, 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 the uh, approval of their neighbor. Uh, according to Dave Ramsey, the number one reason why people stay in debt uh, is because they want to keep up with appearances. This is called keeping up with the Joneses. But little do you know, Dave Ramsey says, according to Ram the Joneses have a leased BMW, an underwater mortgage, and an unwelcome visitor named Sally Mae living in the basement. The truth is that the Joneses are often the most broke people in the neighborhood. 
And if you're not careful, if you follow, the, if, if you follow them into bankruptcy, uh, then it's not worth following them at all. It's not worth seeking their approval. Woe to the Joneses. And if the, the Joneses really do have money, if they really do own everything they have, then let them win. According to Jesus, it doesn't get us anywhere anyway. So the way of, out of seeking approval is believing and trusting in Jesus. It's believing and trusting in his words and trusting in the Lord. The prophet Jeremiah says, and we, we read that in our Old Testament lesson today, but blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. And then he goes on to describe in the rest of that passage that we read, almost very similar to the first uh, Psalm, Psalm chapter Psalm 1, that the person is like this. He will be like a tree planted by, by the streams, by the water that sends at its root by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The one who trusts in the Lord does not fear anything, even the disapproval of others. And, and sometimes when we do the right thing, when we follow the Lord, when we do exactly what the Lord wants us to do, others will disapprove of those actions anyway. But the one who trusts in the Lord does not worry about anything, even being rejected by others. It does not matter how much money, position, power, friends, hardship, struggle, or whatever a person deals with in this life. The one who trusts in the Lord is blessed. The one who trusts in Jesus is blessed. But the one who lives their lives apart from the Lord is not, even if they have all the friends and all the money and all the verbal approval and the adulation in the world. And because Christ dwells in our hearts, we can take concrete actions to move from being approval seekers to knowing we have already received our approval from the Lord. An approval that now will not go away nor diminish over time. And that is because Christ in us is the seal of God's approval. And in that knowledge, we can begin letting go of approval seeking so that we can focus on living a life that focuses on the will of God, not according to the will of others. So I'll be talking a little bit more practically about what some of that might mean next week's sermon. You know, how can we move uh, in, a, in a, what are some practical things, practical actions we can take to move out of this? But we can be set free because the Lord has set us free from approval seeking. He has given us himself. He has approved of us on the basis of what Christ has done on the cross. May we put our full trust and faith in that and in him. Amen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.
God has made us his people through our baptism and to Christ living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, let us, uh, uh, at home where you are, pray as a family of God in Christ Jesus. Pray for all people according to their needs. And after a time, I'll allow uh, you at home a few moments to lift up either silently or out loud uh, those needs that that you feel God has laid on your heart. Uh, Let us pray. Lord, forgive us when we have sought to uh, sought the approval of others, when we've tried to play before the, any other audience except the, the, the great audience of one, our Lord, our Creator and Savior. Lord, in, in some respects, there, there is some addiction that we have toward this, and I ask you to free us from it in the, in the knowledge and the trust that you approve of us, through Jesus Christ, who has given his life for us. And therefore, when you see us, you see Christ who dwells in us. And your approval is with us at every moment of the day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who uh, need your help, need your mercy because of various physical ailments. For, for Missy, we pray. For Stacy Richards, um, Lori Galt's uh, five-year-old grandson, Josiah. Uh, For Bryce, for Tricia, our preschool teacher. Ron Peters, who continues to to fall slowly into your arms in hospice. For Nicole, as she heals from her heart surgery. Um, We pray for those, Lord, um, that, uh, Lord, who who are connected to our church in the military. We pray for those in our church, uh, who many who struggle with uh, uh, various um, forms of disease, especially the, the great C word, the cancer that so many people seem to be uh, getting or have had or gone through. Uh, pray for John as he continues. It is almost at the end of his healing for his rotator cuff. And for Mindy, who, who's uh, still got her foot surgery to recover from. Lord, there's many of us uh, have have issues, have weaknesses, especially in the areas of, of, of our mental health sometimes, Lord, it, it fails because of the frustrations of this pandemic. We pray for those who struggle at home with depression and other forms of uh, isolation. Lord, we need you, and we ask you to fill us when we cannot fill ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue, Lord, to pray that uh, as... Um, as we cannot overcome the wall of, of so many limitations that the pandemic has, has brought up, as we cannot overcome the limitations of a culture that has, has in more and more ways denies the truth of God or even the ability to, to believe in truth, uh, a society that more increasingly seems to be rejecting Christian faith or the gospel. You give us wisdom, you give us uh, ability, you give us a zeal to, uh, to, to know that you are above all things. Help us to continue all of the ministries in this church in the power of, of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we do so often, we pray for those in authority. Bless those in government. We pray that you would bless those in our local denomination, the North American Lutheran Church, especially our Bishop Dan Selbo and all the pastoral leaders and lay leaders throughout the land. Uh, give us grace to boldly go forward with the truth of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Now, as we often do for the online service, we'll spend a few moments in prayer, uh, and then we'll close uh, with the Lord's Prayer together.
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let us sing together the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Be gracious. The Lord Uh, thank you for joining us uh, again, another week of online services, and I, I, I know that so many who, who can't, for whatever reason, uh, come to church, enjoy being a part of, of our fellowship uh, online. So we're so glad that you're with us, and uh, uh, if, uh, if you have any needs, and, you, and if you're in this area, and I can meet those in some way, give the, give the office a call, and I know I see many of you... Uh, throughout the months as I bring communion and do visitation. But uh, if you have some specific needs, please let me or le let our leaders know. And uh, until next week, God bless. Your mercy to accept.